Yankees in the ALCS for the third time in six years, taking on the Cleveland Guardians. They take game one, five to two. They needed a strong outing. They needed a deep outing from Carlos Rodon, and they got one. Rodon, six innings, one run, three hits, nine Ks. He was excellent. It's his first time ever pitching in a CS game, and he absolutely delivered. His first outing since that game two start at Yankee Stadium against Kansas City, where he got pretty fired up. That became a big storyline. He gave out that scream after that strong first inning and felt like he was a little too ramped up for that game. He was very composed, very calm today. Said he watched Garrett Cole pitch in game four, took notes, tried to model himself, and tried to replicate what Garrett Cole did in a big game four, kind of likened Garrett Cole to a robot. I watched uh, Garrett throw that game four in Kansas City and, you know, Mentally, I was taking notes on how he was going out there and going about it, and I just wanted to uh, kind of go about it the same way. And there's some big spots in that game for Garrett. He uh, he gets out of the jam, and it's pretty you know pretty even keel walking off the mound. There's no you know there's no there's no screaming. There's no you know uh, fist pumping or anything. He's just like I said, like a robot. And he he walks out and and walks across the line and into the dugout. Um, yeah, I mean it was. It's not that it's hard. It's just you know being mindful of it and 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 being focused on you know the next pitch. And I think that kind of leads to you know that 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 robot, that good poker face. I'm not sure if Rodon was a robot today, but he was very calm, very collective, and he was excellent. At one point, he set down 11 Guardians batters in a row. He completely neutralized Jose Ramirez, who went 0 for 4 in this game, and for a Cleveland team that crushes lefties. I mean, you look at that lineup. J-Ram is hitting one dot against lefties in the regular season. David Fry has great numbers. John Henske has great numbers against lefties. Stephen Kwan has great numbers against lefties. This is a team that should crush left-handed pitchers, and they didn't. Rodon was just absolutely on it today. He gave you everything you could want in a game one start. And the Yankees bats, they give you an early lead, and that is a recipe for success. Juan Soto, homers to start the third inning. It's his first home run as a Yankee in the postseason. They knock out Alex Cobb in the third inning. They get to Joey Cantillo in relief, and Joey Cantillo, super wild. Four wild pitches in four plate appearances. Yankees get a couple runs off of those. They tack on an Aaron Judd sack fly a little bit later. John Carlos Stanton stays red hot. A missile home run gets a little dicey, a little close in the eighth inning. There is some interference some, uh, where, with Tim Hill where he gets in the way of Brian Rocchio trying to get back to first base. And so they move him over to second base on an obstruction rule. He gets within three runs and a Stephen Kwan RBI. And so Luke Weaver has to come in for the five out save, but he gets all five outs. He strikes out four. He's nails. Uh, for Luke Weaver, how about this? His second five-out save already of the postseason. He's already got three saves, recording four outs or more. He's the first reliever to do that in a single postseason since Kenley Jansen. And it continues this stretch of amazing dominance by the Yankees' bullpen. Outside of Tim Hill, no one in this bullpen allowed, has allowed a run. And that is, again, you take out Tim Hill from the equation. That's a combined 17 in the third innings of scoreless ball from the Yankee bullpen. 15 of them have come from Luke Weaver, Clay Holmes, Tommy Canley. For Clay Holmes, really another strong inning comes in in the seventh, strikes out a batter, looked absolutely dominant. Uh, the Yankee bats, I think, do exactly what you would want them to do. They knock out Alex Cobb in the third inning. He only lasts two and two thirds. You get to this Cleveland bullpen now, they save their big guns, so you don't, you don't get Classe, you don't get Heron, you don't get any of the guys that you had been bracing for their top four relievers but you do get into you know four different relievers in this Cleveland bullpen you make them burn certain guys and, and that's still important um in terms of certain bats uh, I would not say that Aaron Judge has necessarily locked in and gotten it going yet he gets a sack fly but again still feels like he's waiting for that big hit as of right now, they don't need it from him just yet because Stanton's crushing it. Soto continues to hit well. Torres had some great at-bats in the leadoff spot. And you get Anthony Rizzo starting for game one after fracturing his hand, two fingers in second to last game of the regular season. Comes back into the starting lineup, line drive single on his first at-bat. He goes one for three with a walk. Actually gets pulled in the ninth inning. 
Boone said he was just physically and emotionally spent. I thought he was sharp, which was which was really good to see. Um, hand good, um, more just, but I he was just kind of physically and emotionally spent there late in the game, and I kind of felt like kind of just felt like I needed to get him out of there and, and want to make sure I'm managing this properly with him as we as we go through this because you know he really hasn't been on the field in over two weeks and um, but you know came through good with the hand expect him in there tomorrow um, and thought he had some really good at bats not injury related doesn't seem to be defensively related but I would I would say Rizzo's at bats look good man and this is a guy that I think you can expect to give you quality veteran at bats in the bottom of that lineup and that is not a bad thing in fact I think that's an asset for this team on the negative side the two lefties in the middle of the lineup Austin Wells Jazz Chisholm you need more from them both 0 for 4 both of a pair of strikeouts that's your cleanup hitter and your six hitter those are the two guys sandwiching Stanton Wells is backing up Judge you need production from at least one of those guys and you know whether it's moving up Chisholm to hit cleanup I mean neither are hitting great right now Wells is hitting 100 in the postseason and his share of plate appearances Chisholm's 105 so you need one or ideally both of those guys to step up and give you a little bit more at the plate but again Yankees put up five runs they're getting good pitching Rodon completely saves the bullpen with six innings so yeah you still have a lot of length going on for tomorrow you probably you might not be able to use Luke Weaver with the five out save but I think you can use Clay Holmes you'll have Tommy Camley on the table you'll have Ian Hamilton on the table Jake Cousins should be on the table all of these other really good options in the bullpen will be will be available because Carlos Rodon gave you six strong innings and again Yankees Guardians right back at it tomorrow 7 38 p.m it's Cole versus Bybee so this is I would say the aces of these two staffs and a chance for the Yankees behind Garrett Cole to go up 2-0 in this ALCS series and wouldn't that be something wouldn't be that some way to set the tone for the ALCS but Yankees win this one 5-2 over the Cleveland Guardians they take a 1-0 lead in the ALCS and you got to be feeling pretty good about everything you just saw they set the tone in a really nice way to start this series that'll do it for me Lou Orlando WFB Sports Yanks up 1-0 in the ALCS series take care y'all see you tomorrow